Hello, my name is Sarah Thrower and I'm the Youth Associate at the Maxwell Park Library. And it's December, it's a new month. And that means it's a new theme for our Kids Read Curious World program. And the theme for December is Wolves, in fact, in fiction. And so what I'm doing today is a tutorial from my favorite paper crafting site for Wolf masks. It's so big. <laughs> so this is the one that I have put together in the video that is going to follow this. This is the one I made in the tutorial. And uh, to make sure I wanted to do this for you guys, <laughs> I did a test one at work. Now I have two wolf masks. <laughs> um, as you can see, they're big, but uh, don't let the size bother you at all because they're easy. All the parts are very big, so you don't need um, a lot of precision in the cutting. You will need your own glue, your own scissors, and if you pop by my library at Maxwell Park or in the neighborhood of Pine and Yale at 1313 North Canton, we will have a kit for you with everything printed out that you need. Have the instruction sheet and all the parts pages. But if you also have a printer at home and have cardstock, I'm going to show you where you can find these online where you can print them at home. But if not, again, pop by my library, Maxwell Park, and we can give you a kit to make your very own wolf head mask. Wolf mask. And again, it's not the kind of mask that we can wear to prevent flu and such. So this is just for fun at home. And you're, it's big enough that your parents will probably want to uh, take the mask from you either for themselves too. <laughs> and at the end of the video, there are going to be some uh, books about wolves for you to check out. We've got nonfiction, so you can learn more about real wolves. And we have some fiction books that have you know, stories with wolves in them. And if you go to TulsaLibrary.org and search the catalog for Kids Read Curious World Wolves, you're going to find, I think, six to eight uh, curated lists of books about wolves. Uh, whether you like funny books or you just want to learn about wolves or you like mysteries or magic, there's a bunch of lists for all of those kinds of things uh, just so you can find what you like. Anyway, have fun crafting. And uh, happy December. My favorite place on the internet to go for paper crafting stuff is Canyon Creative Park. So if you just start at Google, Canon Creative Park, this is Canon, as in the photography people. So that first link, Canon Creative Park, is them. You don't need to worry about signing in. There, if you click on paper craft, or huh, there's the search box. Search for wolf. And there are a few things. Um, I had considered doing this uh, standing male gray wolf. There's also a craft with two timber wolves, and they're slightly different, but the pieces were very tiny, and you had to be very precise when cutting them out. And then when I saw the wolf mask, I was like, oh my gosh. And um, you can actually pick up the craft kits, the instructions and the pieces. You can pick them up at the Maxwell Park Library until supplies run out. Or if you've got cardstock at home, you can print these out on a thicker cardstock paper and the instructions on just regular paper. You're gonna wanna print them on color. So anyway, good luck, take your time, and enjoy uh, you know, all your wolf crafting for this month. We've got our instructions. 
we have our 17 pages of parts along cardstock. Now let's gather our supplies. I made a bigger one of that. You're going to need scissors. This is glue, stick, and wood glue. Whatever kind of glue you have on hand will be fine. Um, for paper crafting, I prefer Aileen's Tacky Glue, but that's just me. For today, I'm going to use hot glue um, just because it's quicker. So if you are using hot glue, be careful. <laughs> um, a ruler or set square. I don't have a ruler on me, but I do have the edge of my table, which I will use as a straight edge because I will need that. You will need that. And a pencil. So once you get all your things together, then we will number things. So the first thing we're gonna do with all 17 pages is we are going to label, we're gonna number all of our parts because you'll notice on all the pages, you can see it's a one, it's a two, it's a three, but it doesn't say so on the piece itself. So just to make it easier on yourself, oh, <laughs> label it correctly. We're gonna put a one on any tab because those will be glued to another piece, so you won't see that. But also, flip it over, and then put a number on the other side too, which you won't see because it'll be on the inside of the mask. And trust me, that's gonna be helpful. So here we have part two, and there are no tabs. So we're just gonna turn it over, write number two in the middle, Number three, the actual three, on the tab and on the back. Go through all 17 and label them and uh, we'll start cutting next. So here we have part one of 17 and we're gonna cut these out. And like I said in the intro, the biggest reason why I picked this wolf mask rather than an actual like wolf paper figurine type thing is because this is so much larger and you don't need much precision to do this cutting. Like if you, you should float around Canon Creative Park, look at the wolves, I think they have two gray wolves and I'm not sure. Anyway, there's three kinds plus the mask. And when you look at the parts, some of them are very tiny. And oh my gosh, they take me at least an hour to cut out the whole thing. I can't remember how long it takes me to cut out all the mask, but it's not near as time consuming as the little pieces, since all these pieces, all 17 pieces are so big. So. If you don't know this trick, when you have tight triangles, just cut into the triangles. speed this up a little bit just for the recording so just know to take your own time while you cut out the piece Got all 17 pieces cut out. 
and labeled. Next, we are going to fold everything. So on your instruction sheet, you have these notes here, which I made them bigger for us here. When you look at each piece, look for the kind of dots that there are. Like on piece number one, for example, they're just straight up dots. And when we see a dotted line here, it means it is a mountain fold. And they are everywhere. So you can use your straight edge ruler or whatever you have, or just eyeball it like this and make a mountain fold. And that's all number one is. And don't worry when you fold it and some of the color does that because you're not even going to notice. And now this one is not completely straight. So what I did was I would start with the straightest side and just go slowly and fold it along. And oh look, you have a chinny chin chin. Now that's solid, so we're gonna leave that alone. It says cut, but that don't don't cut that. You need this because it's got a blue dot. If you see a blue dot, you know there's gonna be glue on it in the future. When you have dots and dashes, like on piece number two, dots and dashes. Whoop, let me get in the center. Then it is a valley fold. You're gonna fold it instead of like a mountain, it's gonna go like a valley. And just kind of do the same thing, but the opposite of what I did earlier. <laughs> kind of pinch a straight, the straighter edge together and just pinch it as you go along. Okay, so anyway. Don't worry about gluing it, just go through all your pieces. And you're gonna fold, that's been folded. That's three. Some of them, like four, only have a tab that folds. Work through your stack, fold all your pieces, and next we'll be able to glue. We have our instructions and I have parts one through six. And rather than just going like that, like they say, we are going to start with this one. We have two and six. It's showing us that six goes in the back of two. So two is what we need and six and it only fits one way see here's the front and here's the back so let's glue that first so we've got two and six now let's follow the instructions where's our number one here's number one is number one and we're going to put it there's blue so we know there's going to be glue there and put it like that 